Um, I need to recognize a few people before I actually get into my speech. First of all, I think all of you are aware that I only serve at the pleasure of the other four commissioners. And I want to make sure that uh, you all know who they are. Uh, Fred couldn't be here, but uh, Scott is here. Scott Drake, uh, where are you, Scott? Back in the back. This is this is Commissioner Drake's very first State of the City address while he was an acting commissioner. And I got to tell you, the man is working hard. He's learning fast, and the rest of us better watch out. <laughs> Patty, uh, is Patty Garrett? Yes. Oh, yeah. There's Patty. <laughs> She's short back there. Okay. All right. Uh, Patty just got elected to her second term. She's, uh, I've, I've heard people say, Patty must have a plumb. Uh, you never go anywhere you don't see Patty. She gets <laughs> everywhere. She's out there all the time walking and a very busy. Fred Boykin uh, just got reelected as well. Fred had uh, some things came up a, a little while ago and he wasn't able to, to come tonight. But so I'm going to tell a little story. <laughs> You remember uh, last year I said that uh, I was really glad that, or some, probably nobody remembers, but anyway, <laughs> last year I said that uh, I was real glad Fred did uh, such a good job because I often get credit for some of the stuff he does. You know, two older, white, gray beard guys. Uh, but I was taken aback a little bit when it happened right at home. Uh, <laughs> at Christmas time, I, I went out for a little while, and uh, while I was gone, Fred came by to drop something off, and uh, Nikki, Nikki saw him coming through the, uh, coming up on the porch, and she stomped him to the door, muttering, what's he doing ringing the doorbell? He's got a key. <laughs> Mayor Pro Tem uh, Keisha Cunningham is back in the back. And I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm just very fortunate to have her not just as a friend, but as a, a confidant and a counselor, and uh, she's really uh, worked well with me this last year. Uh, and I guess most of you know that I've only been mayor now for a little over a year. So this is my first uh, state of the city address in which, uh, <clears throat> in which really I had been mayor for a while. But from last year we did the tribute to Bill Floyd. Bill is here, um, or at least he was. He might have checked out before the before the speech. Bill, I don't see you. <laughs> okay, well he was here. Okay, Bill, Bill did a great job as mayor, and I have not seen. Uh, Mayor Emerita uh, Wilson uh, either. And I didn't see any county officials here except for the sheriff, Jeff Mann. And Jeff, are you still here? Can we acknowledge you? I don't see Jeff left? Okay. Well, we appreciate him being here. Um, I almost forgot to introduce my wife and my daughter, my wife Mickey's right down here. My daughter is right over here. I'm also very fortunate to have so much familiar, familiar family support. <laughs> okay, the state of the city. I don't think I have to tell y'all the state of the city is great. In just a word, it's just great. Um, I was at the Cab Municipal Associated meeting uh, about a month or so ago, and uh, the, the mayor of Shanley, Eric Clarkson, came up to me, shook my hand, he said, Congratulations. I said, uh, Congratulations for what, mayor? He said, Well, you name it. <laughs> Decatur's always winning an award, getting some kind of recognition. Recognition, in fact, I expect any day now to, to, to read that Decatur's been named the greatest city on the planet. <laughs> That's how we feel about it. 
Okay, what I'd like to do in the next few minutes is first just talk a, a briefly about our financial condition and position, and uh, and then I, I, I'd like to talk a bit about a theme that I've been thinking about about this, about how we're building for the future in Decatur. We're building community, we're building infrastructure, and we're building people. We're building for a sustainable future, and we're doing it on the foundation of our strategic plan. I can assure you that our, our financial position is very positive. Our approach to budgeting is conservative. You all know that our primary responsibility is to be extremely diligent trustees of public funds. Since 2007, we've added two and a half million dollars to our fund balance and even lowered the millage rate. Well, I know it was a little bit, but it was a lowering during the recession. At the height of the recession, both Moody's and Standard & Poor's upgraded our credit rating. We always get clean audits. This year, the auditors reported no findings again. That's really difficult to achieve in an environment where the standards are changing constantly. I want to congratulate our team, Andrea Arnold, Janet Kendallberger, and, and others that worked on it. Andrea and Janet, are you here? Thank you for another, great, for another great year on that. Okay, we're building for the future by building community. It'd be difficult for me to try to describe all the things that go into building community, but I think an integral part of it is the leverage that's gained through partnerships. Many of you are involved with some of our partners like Adam Scott College, Cokehurst Garden, the Woodlands, the DeKalb History Center, Global Growers Network, many, many others. <clears throat> I just want to kind of single out three uh, for highlighting tonight. Uh, the Decatur Business Association. All right. DBA has been a partner for more than 30 years. All that the DBA does to support local businesses, bringing people to the square to show off our downtown, offering opportunities to volunteer, work together, has done much to foster our sense of community. If you're a board member with the uh, DBA, stand up, let us acknowledge you. We've got it. If you're a former board member with the DBA, please stand. How far back is that? <laughs> especially past presidents. We want all the past presidents to stand. Now, if you've ever volunteered, no, keep standing. Come on, we're going to have a lot of people stand here in a minute. Just, yeah, just stand. Look how, if you've, if you've ever volunteered, for one of the events sponsored by the DBA, stand up. Yes, look at this. Yes. And if if you're if you're a member of DBA, stand up. <laughs> there you go. Look at this. I'm, all right. Give yourselves a hand. I may have mentioned this last year that I remember when there were about 25 of us that came to the meetings, uh, Bill Roth and John Adams uh, presiding, and we knew everybody on a first name basis. We've come a long way. It's really great to see. Another great partner we have is with the City Schools of Decatur. state of Georgia and for all I know they're the best in the whole nation it certainly um, did appear that way when they hosted the president last year uh, 
We're extremely proud of our schools, all their achievements, made possible because of the commitment, dedication of so many bright, talented, and energetic people. I know some of the school board members are here. Would you please stand if you're a school board member? Yes. Mr. Gobel is way back there. He's the vice chair uh, this year of the school board. I, Bernadette was here, but she, oh, there she is in the back. She's the chair of the school board. <laughs> Julie Rain has been on the school board now for a while, and Annie Joa is just brand new on the school board. They're doing one great job. <laughs> now, oh, I want to know this, this is an exercise we're going to go through a little bit tonight. I, just keep standing. Now, if you're a former school board member, if you ever served on the school board, please stand. Okay, we got two here, uh, Dr. Keating and, and Susan Cobley. Now, if you're a teacher and working in the K schools, please stand. We want to recognize you, our staff members. Do we have any of the staff in the schools? We have the we have the superintendent of the schools, Dr. Phyllis. Thank you very much. I just wanted to recognize all the hard work and good stuff that you guys are doing. Um, I had the pleasure last fall of, 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 of attending a retreat where all of the school board members and all of the city commission were, were present. And, and in addition, the two newly elected but not holding office yet people were there, as well as the school superintendent and, and the city manager. And with the help of a facilitator, what? <laughs> there were some people, yes, I left out, there were some people from the public who were there observing our actions. That, I guess that's why I got that strange look. Um, but what I wanted to tell you is we made some great strides toward a better understanding of our respective roles and responsibilities. I really felt good about it. I believe we all came away with a renewed sense of purpose and dedicated to working together on a range of issues that affect everybody in the city. Another partner I want to mention is the Decatur Housing Authority. The city of Decatur has been very fortunate to have a housing authority that has always worked closely with us seeking creative solutions for low-income housing. You, uh, all of you have seen the new townhomes that are along uh, uh, Commerce across from the uh, new high school stadium. And now they're finishing up the ones over on Electric Avenue. <clears throat> well, last year they also opened a, a, a senior a senior city uh, center called Oliver House. Oliver House is just a great addition to the kind of things that they've been doing, uh, and, and it's all for the seniors. Just recently, the Atlanta Regional Commission announced that the Oliver House had received the highest Development of Excellence Award. Congratulations to Doug Faust, the director. Last year, we hosted President Obama 
and our just reopened rec center is a great day for Decatur. If you haven't seen the rec center, I highly recommend it to you. See the elevated walking tracks, movement studio, the instructional quality kitchen. I really especially like the adaptive reuses. The wall decorations were made from the old gym bleachers. The tables in the kitchen area were made from the old gym floor. It has state-of-the-art energy, <coughs> energy systems. We expect it to earn a LEED certification at the silver or better level. In partnership with the city schools, we've done a major renovation in addition to the public works building. Everyone's excited about it. not just for the new workspaces, but also for the synergy and the economies of scale. Our new design, environment, and construction division is there, running its one-stop permitting shop. I'm told that some of the uh, school's maintenance staff were so excited they moved in a week before they were scheduled. <laughs> Yesterday, the school board and the city commission had a ribbon cutting as we rededicated, uh, <coughs> rededicated it as a, a joint facility. And this year we will open the Beacon Municipal Complex, the largest building project the city has ever undertaken. This is another joint project with our city schools. In May, the school administration will move into their new administrative offices in the summer, the, the city will be moving in with active living, police department, municipal court, and extra pool. The Beacon Municipal Complex also marks a major milestone. It will be the culmination of a 10-year infrastructure investment that has seen the renovation of all our public facilities. This investment will last for the next 50 years. We've been able to leverage our excellent credit rating in a very low interest rate environment to make lasting improvements to buildings, parks, sidewalks, and streets. All of the annual debt service payments are covered by non-operating funds and all payments have been made in full and on time. We are building for the future with experienced, smart, and dedicated people. <laughs> well, you, you all saw the length of service awards presented earlier, so you've seen the long-term commitment of our employees, from hourly workers to top management. You know that in your organizations, you're only as good as the people you have. I couldn't be more proud of our people. We work as a team. We all have confidence that we're working together on the same goals. We know we are because those goals are spelled out for us in our strategic plan. The plan guides everything we do from the way we spend money to the way we regulate zoning. Recently, We've done some realigning of organizational functions as a direct response to goals in the strategic plan. A very popular decision was to move Jennifer Ross into the community outreach position within the police department. Jennifer, are you here? <laughs> at, at the same time, we hired Casey Yoder as our New Public Information Officer, Casey. <laughs> and everybody knows what a great job Ann Harvey has done over the years with our volunteers. <laughs> well, she, she's just become coordinator of our lifelong community effort. <laughs> Welcome aboard one of our new hires, John Maxima. John, are you here? I don't see it. Johnny? Well, anyway, John is the director of our new design, environment, and construction department 
running the one-stop shop for permitting over at our new public works building. Sherry Chapman, are you here? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sherry's managing our new business, which is, uh, if you haven't seen it, you need to go by. It's really well located, right between the Marriott and the old courthouse. It earned a gold medal recognition from the American Society of Interior Designers. It's provided by the Tourism Board. My speech says, which also provided the videos, but I don't think the videos are running. I guess we didn't do that. We were, we were supposed to do some, uh, some of the tourism boards, new videos, have them on the TVs for y'all to see, but we forgot. I did. <laughs> okay. Well, at any rate, that finishes what I was going to say about our, our employees, but you know who does the work. Okay, now I'd like to briefly discuss some projects that we'll be working on in the coming months. For many years, we wanted to see the Callaway property developed, redeveloped. Uh, you know what the Callaway property is, that ugly square big building that belonged to the county that was right south of the county courthouse? Well, in fact, I'm, I'm very proud to tell you we finally had the closing. We are now the owners. They are now our tenants. <laughs> They have a two-year lease when they get out. We will see it redeveloped into a mixed-use project, the kind we've been dreaming about for that location for a very long time. <laughs> On January 26, the City Commission had an all-day work session. We got a report from a team of consultants working on our Unified Development Ordinance. You've probably seen UDO around in some headlines. We were able to give some feedback, discuss the plans for moving forward with that project. We are now in the midst of four community workshops. And they are built around the areas of community, character, oh no, I'm sorry, community character, stormwater, sustainability, and zoning. They've already done the workshop on community character, but uh, I think stormwater is tomorrow night, but anyway, the others are coming up. I, I, uh, if you're interested in those issues, I urge you to attend those workshops. And uh, we hope to be wrapping up that whole project this fall. You're hearing a lot about annexation. I, I guess it was destined, I was gonna have to address the issue tonight. <laughs> And I do appreciate Mark making, making light of it because it is a tough issue. It's, it's been a real tough one for us. But much of the discussion you're hearing now is, is a direct result of all the talk about municipalization and the formation of new cities. It certainly appears that almost all, if not all, <coughs> of DeKalb County north of Memorial Drive is going to be in one city or another. Now the city can sit back and let that happen and do nothing, or, or we can start staking out some areas that we think might be in the long-term best interest of the city. We've got to take a long-range view at this because <clears throat> once these cities, if they get formed, are formed, and if they border us, as has been proposed in the maps, then our ability to ever expand uh, would, would be, uh, just wouldn't exist. Because you can't annex from a city. You can only annex from, the, from a county. You can't annex probably from another city. So we've got to enter into those discussions. We've got to work on them. Um, some have asked, what, what's the desirability of having any kind of annexation? Well, the only reason the city of Decatur would be looking to annex any larger pieces, any larger areas, I mean, there might be small area, uh, there might be small areas here and there just to round out our borders and things, but if we were going to do any kind of large-scale annexation, the only reason to do it would be to improve our ratio of commercial properties to residential properties. Our uh, our ratio right now is only 14%. It hovers somewhere between 12 and 14%, or has over the years I've been in the commission. 
these new cities that are being proposed, you read about them, they've done studies, the studies say they're viable. The details uh, show that those, those studies consider viability around one-third ratio of commercial to residential, not even half of that. You say, well, look at all the uh, commercial property we have downtown. Well, what you got to remember is a lot of property in Decatur, and not just downtown, but all of the city, is not on the tax rolls. So it's not a part of that commercial tax digest. We'll be, this year, working closely with the school board, working closely with professionals who will be looking at every possible parcel to see if those parcels would make sense, would, would make the city more viable and, 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 and make our, our future more sustainable. And, and not just for the benefit of the citizens in Decatur, but for the benefit of the citizens in Decatur County and all of us. We will we'll be looking hard at it. We will not have any proposals that don't make a great deal of sense for us as well as the school board. And I almost forgot this. I had to uh, scribble it down a few minutes ago. Um, Google Fiber. I know everybody's excited about Google Fiber. <laughs> I just want you to know that I, uh, I've already had a meeting with some of the, oh, well, let's see, she, she was the Southeast Regional uh, Director for Governmental and Public Affairs, I believe, and we've been meeting our staff on a regular basis, both with the Google folks as well as the other uh, eight cities that are involved in this project. So uh, I just want you all to know we're going to do everything we can do uh, to make sure that Google knows we're ready for Google Fiber. If you don't know what that means, it means the possibility for every resident, every business indicator to have internet access that is anywhere from 10 to 100 times what you got now. So, oh, it would, yes. Okay, in conclusion, let me just say again, Decatur is in excellent condition. The state of the city is great. We are building for the future, and we're doing it on the foundation of our strategic plan. Thank you all for your time.